It's the Score North Twin Show. Gentlemen, another victory last night. I believe five and a half games is the biggest lead the Twins have had, right? All Mm -hmm. season? Yes. Yes. The magic number is down to 44. Yeah, you're damn right. We're counting down the magic number with seven weeks to go in the in the season. You know, of I, all the mock, all the mocking things people do for us, we haven't been mocked on the magic number front yet. I thought that was going to be like, oh, really? You're going to be doing the magic number? I've seen so a far, people. you guys are being ridiculous. Yeah, we yeah, don't. Yeah, we're, we're being mocked, made fun of. The uh, the five game win streak also the longest of the year they, they had a few fours before but they had never gotten to five until last night in detroit so that's the longest and then six games over 500 is also did they, is were the they six high games water over early? well how far did they yeah, get they, early yeah they were 10 season? and four right okay they, they were 10 and four i thought so they're thought back that was a to 500 start. since their hot start basically is how this is working out took mm-hmm. them took them all this time from the second week of the season to claw their way back yep. to a all they needed record. to do was stand pat at the trade deadline and they would be world beaters. Yep. Well, it motivated somebody, at least in the clubhouse. And uh, it kind of, it, it seems like it's having a similar effect to the 2017 trade deadline when they decided to sell a couple pieces, actually. And then mm-hmm. that team, which was below 500 and kind of flailing, and they were like seven games back in the division, that team then went 20 or 21 and nine in August. And this team is off to a red-hot start in August. So we're going to get to some feedback, some listener comments that have interesting questions for jumping off points in Immaculate Grid Challenge. But what do you guys make? So Carlos Correa had a big game last night, drives in four, hits a home run. Um, He actually had, before he singled on Saturday, had an 0 for 17 hitless skid the week leading up to the weekend. I think his OPS is back to like 700. So this is the worst year of his career. Mm-hmm. He had a big game last night, and he did speak to the. St- I'm getting this from uh, the Star Tribune, or is this from Bally's? This might have been from Bally's. I think they wrote off the game, off the broadcast. But, but he said, uh, "I've been struggling all year. There's no secret. I'm going to put my head down and just give. Uh, I'm not going to put my head down and give up and just say I'll come back next year. I'll do it for the next five or so years. My mentality is to just go out there and figure it out every single day. So." Uh, he recognizes this is one of the worst seasons of his career, but he is intent on busting out of it before the end of this season. What do you make of this whole thing? Um, I make of it. I've gotten excited before this uh, season when he gets in a little bit of a hot streak. And cause you know, you expect like in June, I think he started to hit a little bit and you're like, okay, uh, now there's going to be a switch that gets flipped. And at some point in time, it's like, it doesn't. So I guess what I make of it is can he build off of this? I also don't necessarily understand what's wrong at times. Um, His at-bats, like he took a strike three against the Diamondbacks on Sunday that was right down the middle of the plate, and it it was right in the box. There was no, like, good eye or he or the umpire blew the call. And as Patrick has talked about a lot, it appears at times like he's become a guest hitter, which makes no sense for a guy with his track record. So I need to see this for a prolonged period of time before I get excited because it just feels like there's been something off and I have no idea what. And every once in a while it clicks back in, but to date, and we're into August now, it hasn't clicked back in for any like legitimate extended period of time. I like that they took him out of the leadoff spot. At this point, there are just more capable leadoff hitters. And I got, I understood that there was a stretch in June, July where it was working. He was being productive, um, but he is not worthy of being at the top of your order right now. However, the other issue there is he has grounded in to 22 double plays, which is the most in baseball. And there's going to be nothing worse. Nothing is going to be killing a rally more than when Korea comes up and there's runners on the corners and he gets, you know, six, four, three against him. Um, so I like that he's out of the leadoff spot. He shouldn't be batting leadoff. He probably should be honestly batting fifth or sixth at this point. Um, but you hopefully don't see any more and you're, it's inevitable, but you don't want to see too many more of those inning ending double plays that he is leading baseball in. It's kind of insane. So he was asked about that too. Can he point to a reason why he's grounded into so many double plays this season? He goes, yeah, I'm slow. <laughs> I'm slow. As By the sleep. way, the, these are quotes that 
I'm sorry. Uh, Bobby Nightingale was, I believe, in the clubhouse for this from the Star Tribune. So I'm getting these from the Star Tribune. But yeah, like those are, those are like, uh, you know, Albert Pujols with plantar fasciitis double yes. play totals. <laughs> yes, like Ortiz, right? Just you know, ground and uh, like like there's no hope. It's not like it's a close play. It it is weird. I don't. That's that's my big thing though. I don't understand exactly what's wrong here, or what's been it's wrong. It's got to be something physical. Because why would why, I guess we've seen it before where guys just but it's usually the big strikeout guys, right? It's it's yes. like the Joey Gallows or the like the Chris Davises, yes. those type of guys. It's not the and Carlos it, Correa's. No, you're right. Yeah. And it's very rarely it's oftentimes it's a left handed power bat that just has a big hole in his swing. So I don't know. Maybe he's got I mean, obviously the, the ankle thing is the elephant that's gonna be in the room for the rest of his career. But on the flip side of this, maybe it is just a weird four-month slump. Can you imagine, you know, this team is creating some separation. You're trying to see how they stack up against playoff teams. They'd play the Blue Jays right now in a three-game wildcard series. If all of a sudden you get, like, a peak version of Carlos Correa and the playoff pedigree that he has. Well, then you can win a playoff game. <laughs> you can sure. win more than a playoff game if you get you win a couple Carlos games, Correa. Yeah. 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 I will say this, though. Um and and it's it's probably a small consolation considering what he's being paid. His play at shortstop remains magnificent. Mm -hmm. Like I will I will give him that. It, it, whatever this is at the plate has not affected that. And and I just you know we have seen so many guys in this town play shortstop, right? And a lot of them not do do it extremely well. That having a solidified guy like this at short, I think now we take it for granted. But we shouldn't. His play at shortstop is phenomenal. Yes. And his arm is phenomenal. And they're going to need it. You saw a couple plays, too, because they turned a couple double plays with Dallas Keuchel. But if, if Keuchel's going to be in their rotation for the rest of the season, too, I don't know that he is, but you need a, a lockdown shortstop because that guy's gonna, like about two-thirds of the batted balls that he induces are going to be ground balls. You can't Chris just have thrilled about it. out there. Yeah, he's, he's he like, we finally got a ground ball pitcher. This is great. <laughs> Edwin Julian is is horrified and scared, but Correa is like, this is great. Not me. Not me. <laughs> so let's um let's dive into some listener questions here. And thank you guys. You guys have made this really fun the last three weeks. The the revival of the Score North Twin Show for the first time in two years. And the revival of it on a regular basis for the first time in probably three or four years. So if you are just discovering this, thank you. Please click the subscribe button and the like button on the Score North YouTube channel. And if you give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts and or Spotify, you can also help spread the word about this uh, this show. So let's see here. Marlink1215 says, where should Royce Lewis bat in the batting order when he comes back? So he is starting a rehab assignment. Declan's going to be out there on a mm -hmm. score north scouting assignment tomorrow night, mm -hmm. watching Royce Lewis and Brooks Lee in St. Paul. Yeah, That'd be exciting. That's together. awesome. They're playing a, a night game tonight. I believe they're in the lineup tonight on Tuesday. Then they have a day game Wednesday, which I'll be going to. So I wouldn't be completely shocked if one of them is not in the lineup, but I'm hoping both of them are because I really want to watch both them um, defensively and offensively. So, I mean, Brooks Lee is a whole nother. If they, if they decide it's time for Brooks Lee, you have even more of a log jam, but when Lewis comes back, and let's say Lewis, Kirloff, and Buxton come back at some point in August, which is wishful thinking, but let's yep. let's hope. I feel like your best offensive lineup, at least let's say against a right-handed pitcher, because you've got these left-handed bats. So it's like you're going to face like three quarters of your games are going to be against right-handed starting pitchers. When everybody's healthy, I feel like you need to make a decision on Byron Buxton in center field or bench. Cause mm -hmm. I think, cause yes. so your catchers, you know, Jeffers and Vasquez are alternating and Jeffers has been on fire. Another, another one last night, you know, Kirloff first base when he's healthy, unless you want to move Polanco to a bench roll, like a super utility bench roll and put Julian at second base. But I would probably put Polanco at second for defensive purposes, if mm -hmm. nothing else. And then Correa shortstop. Royce Lewis yep. goes back to third. Yep. Maddie Walner in left. Max Kepler, who's been their hottest hitter for the last month or two, in right. And then if you've got Polanco at second, Julian's got to be your DH because 
he's your on-base machine, and that leaves center field from either Michael A. Taylor, who I know he hits a home run once in a while, but has a 268 on base percentage, or Byron Buxton. But I don't know that they're, I, th- I think that they're done with the center field thing for him. So it's going to get really interesting. We are, we are also um, have no inclination that they would put Royce Lewis back in the outfield, correct? Like he is a third baseman now, it feels like. For he the time not, being. I think since he tore his knee, I don't think he's even taken a fly ball in the outfield. Right? I yeah, yes. So yes, I I think that I guess it's a tough decision, but in my opinion, it's not. That your Buxton bench roll assessment is exactly right, and he can DH sometimes too. He just can't have that position tied up like like uh, Nelson Cruz did back in 2019, which is what he was doing. I would yes, Polanco at second. I am not going to take a chance. The the Julian conundrum at second is so large because of this. He is he is uh, I think pretty much on track to be the de- the uh, definition of a professional hitter. He's got a great eye, gets on base all the time. He knows the strike zone. Like for his experience, he's incredibly um, valuable at the plate. That being said, the problem when he he plays second beyond the fact that his glove is a gold glove. And I don't mean gold glove caliber. I mean, it's like he's got a gold glove on his hand because the ball bounces off of it. Um, and I don't know if if you guys saw this Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Sunday. But there was, um, in the midst of the Diamondbacks stealing eight bases, there was one where Vasquez, I think it was, threw the ball. And it literally, Julian didn't know what to do. And it went off his glove. Yeah. Like, the throw wasn't great, but you got to you gotta catch the throw. So, and the other problem is, in a tight game, if you leave Julian in, it's a liability at second. If you take him out, you potentially, if it's going to be tied, like, le- like, let's say it's a playoff game. If you take him out and, and you go to extras, you have forfeited a guy who's really good at the plate. So, I think for a playoff game especially... You have to start with the thought of Polanco at second, Julian the DH, and I know that he can be a liability at the plate, but with Buxton's knee being bad, I think Taylor has to play center field. Should I give you guys another game one playoff lineup? I did this, do I think, like a month ago. Should we wow. do this again? Wow. Want to do, do this it. again with Hell lineup yeah. and defensive alignment? Against Let's a lefty or a righty? Uh, Toronto would start. That. Gosman, right? You didn't. Wait, well, you didn't think of that. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Right. Their now. lineup well, changes drastically. Lefties hold on, versus hold on. righties. Like Go. Donovan Solano. Like if it's against a lefty, Donovan Solano is in my lineup. Yeah. Okay. So let's assume this is against a lefty. Against let's a lefty. This, well, hold, yeah, on, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll get this right. So, I love how Declan's coming in here. He's going to manage the Twins. He's like, uh, here's the lineup. Doesn't matter. Well, who's pitching? Kevin ah. Gosman. If if they play Toronto, which I think they're on track to right now. At Target Field, they would face Kevin Gosman, who's a right-handed pitcher yep. in Game One. So let's go with that because let's go with Gosman pitching. So this is a real-life example of Game One against Kevin Gosman. Yep. Okay. And, and almost I'm, 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 Does this I'm screw gonna, up your whole experiment now? Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to give you the same lineup regardless. I'm just going to give you this lineup. You guys can nitpick it as you want. Seems reckless. Oh, Phil will. Phil yep. will nitpick okay. it big time. Me, uh-uh. That's fine. Uh, leading off at DH, Julian. Okay. He's DHing. He's leading off. At third base, Royce Lewis batting second. Okay. Batting third in left field, Alex Kirloff. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good so far. Huh? Batting cleanup. A little bit of a surprise here, potentially, but we were talking about him with Royce. Ryan Jeffers batting cleanup and catching. Well, he's just mashing the baseball. Yeah, I mean, he's mad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have Correa batting fifth and at short. And I'll explain my logic here why Walner is batting sixth and in right field. Okay. I just, as much, I guess it doesn't really matter now that I talk this out, but like you got three extremely slow dudes. Now, granted, they're your boppers in your lineup. You know, it's not like they're supposed to be expected to be speedsters, but like Jeffers, Correo, Walner, those are flat footed dudes that aren't going to be able to run too fast. But the sixth guy would be Walner at right field, Correa batting fifth at shortstop. So three spots left. Donnie Barrels at first base batting seventh. Wow. Jorge Polanco batting eighth at second. And then Michael A. Taylor in center batting ninth. Okay. Hmm. So the hottest hitter on the team is not in this lineup. 
Oh, I don't have Max Kepler. Kepler. Forgot about Kepler. <laughs> well, wait wait about a Kepler. second. <laughs> That this is awesome. the twin show. Forgot it. Forgot about next. You know how many thousands of people consume this? That was awesome. <laughs> totally forgot about Max Kepler. <laughs> that was sweet. Wait, wait. Did you steal? Is this lineup stolen from Judd's notes like three weeks ago? No, I, I, I legitimately constructed it when you guys started doing this. No, I'm saying Judd would have. Judd would have done this oh. maliciously. Oh to yeah. Keep Max Kepler out of the. That was lineup. incredible. Yeah, I forgot about Max Kepler. Okay, so hold on. We can go back here. So you've got, okay, Polanco is eighth. Who is batting ninth? Um, Michael A. Taylor in center field. Okay, center field, Michael A. Taylor. Okay. All right, so where, all right, you get a mulligan here. Where would you put Mac? This is, but this is the experiment. Like, this is what's hard about the Twins, actually, look, despite look being Phil like 17 Look at Phil runs. trying to save this gaff. Uh, what if you put. I'm, trying, I'm throwing a life raft here. <laughs> so let's put. Before we <laughs> change the order, Kepler is in right field. Okay, he's in right field. Solano is not going to play against Go yeah. Gosman. So, so would Tucker you put used... Wal? Can can Wal? I don't know why my mic keeps going hot. Can you put Walner at first base? No. Does Walner play first? Kirloff would play first. <laughs> no. No. Come on, Rocco. Walner in left. Yes. And Walner in left. Kirloff at first. Okay. Kirloff at first. Kepler, you're gonna, right. gonna put your guy Donnie Barrels is gonna be a pinch hitter. Yeah, yep. I mean that's fine too. That's a that's well, yeah, a he can come in hitting option. But he's yeah. not gonna start. But if if Gosman starts, right, w which he will for the Blue Jays. Okay, Solano's not gonna start. So I probably have to move Kepler up from sixth. So I probably would flip flop. I put I could put Kepler fifth. And these are the guys that want Rocco fire. They can't even oh, figure okay. out. We can't even figure out. <laughs> Uh, we should do this every day. We should we should just we haphazardly should. put together a lineup. What if Paul Deli said, I just forgot, Max. I'm sorry. Sorry, guy. Yeah. Sorry, oh, Max. man, it's Julian. Camp. I didn't even know. God, like, Julian's been out of the lineup for like four days. I totally forgot you were here. You're kind of quiet. Weirdo. Um, I like the here. top, though. That's Julian, a great, Julian, Lewis, Kirilov. I, I like the top of this order. I do too. Some mm -hmm. table setters up there for the boppers. And uh, if Carlos Correa can get back to being a bopper, you could probably put him up to third and then, you know, slide those other guys down. Here's Ooh. another question for you guys off of our Joe Maurer section of the um, Monday episode. So Alex Kaiser says, with Joe Maurer going into this weekend, going into the Twins Hall of Fame this weekend, who goes into the Twins Hall of Fame next? Having a tough time with this one because the crop of yes. teams lately seems to be empty of real options. You have like the Tory, Johan, Morno, Nathan Racky, all those guys are those guys are all in. Yes. And I then love the two thousand twelve through two thousand seventeen teams were yikes. So what do yep. you guys think? Hearing a lot of Jack Morris. Jack Morris is not in the Twins Hall of Fame. Oh, you could put Jack Morris. If, I, I don't think he for is that a, game you could put him in. I don't think he is, and I don't think I don't think he's next. Um I'm going to give you a, a guess because I thought the same thing because it occurred to me like for the last five years, Guardian, the boys always come back, right? Like, let's bring him back and let's put in this guy. And and look, those guys deserved it. I'm not trying to say that they didn't, mm -hmm. but I think Alex's point is spot on. I think we're out of them now, right? Like Joe is the last one. Um, I am going to I'm going to say that I think there's a very good chance Roy Smalley goes in. Okay. Starting shortstop in the 1979 All Star Game um, was came back and was part of the '87 World Championship team. Has been a broadcaster, which in the case of Gladden definitely helped him out as well. Yeah, really associated as a twin. Uh, but I think if you look at what what Roy Smalley did playing shortstop on bad Twins teams, that there is a case to be made that that he is a deserving um, inductee. I think Roy Smalley has a good chance now. That we're going to go back in time, basically, with with this crop done. Honestly, I I, I think it might be Brian Dozier. So Dozier hit too. 167 I, home runs. I wouldn't worry about that. I don't think so. Got some MVP votes. Won a Gold Glove. Are you reporting that, or what do you mean? I don't think he's going to make it. I just don't think he's going to make it. I, How I many don't home runs, Dex? 100. 167 with That's the Twins. 57 more than Roy Smalley had with the Twins. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, right. But it's Gold not a glove, all star. Really, an, like every he was good with the media. The organization loves him. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he goes all right. in. Okay. I okay okay okay. I can't put Brian Dozier in the Twins Hall of Fame. All right. I agree with that. And I, I won't be. Yeah. I love I'll Roy Smalley, but I don't know that his career rises to the level of being in the Twins Hall of Fame. I'd have to hear maybe more from like the Patrick Royces who covered him and you know what what he sort of meant to the Twins organization, but I feel like we're now to a point where are we just going to try and find guys to put in well, because there's not are we going to go like 3 years without anyone? What are we going to do? So from last November when Joe was elected, I've got the ballot. So our guys put put on this after being retired for five years. Is is that how this works? Because I'm gonna guess that there's more names now on the ballot that Joe's come off of it. But I'll run through the ballot, okay? Quickly. My ballot must have gotten lost in the mail this year. I had to ask to be put back on. (laughs) Like like I got one, I got one like eight years ago, and then there was a long period of time where I didn't. And so I sent Dustin Morris a note. I'm like, can I please like vote? Because like this is in my wheelhouse, I'd like, I'd Me like too. to vote. I voted and he's like, for absolutely. 10 years. And he's like, absolutely. And so I got back on. So you should ask to get, get back on. Okay. Um, all right. So the list include included in November, a pitcher by the name of Dave Boswell, 64 to 70. Um, a more familiar name and a former guest of this show, Tom Brunanski is on the ballot. Dean yeah. Chance, a pitcher, Scott Erickson, Dave Goltz, Dave Goltz, Dave Goltz has a chance. 96 and 79, 3.48 ERA in eight years with the Twins. Um, when it still counted or when it still was important, I guess, he got to 20 wins in 1977. He's tied for fifth in Twins history with 11 shutouts. Okay. Mudcat, Mudcat Grant, interesting. Christian Guzman, Brian Harper, Jack Jones, Corey Kosky, Shane Mack, Jeff Reardon, Roy Smalley, Al Worthington, who is who was a closer uh, before it was popular from 64 to 69 and is seventh currently on the Twins all time save list. 88. The problem with guys like Worthington and Boswell and Chance is very, very few people, probably just Patrick, who have ballots remember those guys yeah and there's guys you could make a list of you know well mudcat grant was the was one of the best pitchers in baseball the year the twins won the pennant went to the world series in 1965 but he Mm -hmm. was only a twin for like three years and dean chance was only a twin for like three years shane mack had a couple really good seasons i guess you have to decide what do you want the twins hall of fame to be do you want it to be just a celebration of guys we've heard of who are pretty good for a couple years right i agree or do you want it to be an actual you know, prestigious hall yeah. of great players and figures. So and I guess that's I know, why, man. that's why I brought up Roy though, because Roy has a, a history as well, because yes, it, it's interesting. Now I don't, is there a clear cut guy who just retired, who would become eligible to make it? I don't think there is now that Joe, hmm. I mean, Declan's not wrong. Dozier will be on the ballot, I'm sure, but I don't think he's a, I don't think he qualifies for, Twins Hall of Fame. Do we start Dave, putting some 2000s era Yankees in the Twins Hall of Fame? No, oh God. What? Why do you have to do that? Alex this Rodriguez. Fun. He's an owner of a Minnesota sports team now. Maybe A Rod. Jeter. Touch hey, Jeter. Mariana Rivera. We already got him the broken bat rocking yeah, chair. Yeah, we, we got him a nice rocking chair. Bro- oh, God. Chair broken gorgeous. dreams. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Dave Golds intrigues me, I guess. But again, he's 72 to 79. So, so much time has passed. Most people with a ballot aren't going to have any idea who Dave Goltz was. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's a really good question. I don't know that we really have an answer. We have to keep thinking on it. And I got to get my apparently my ballot back for 2023. This conspiracy to keep the score North people off the. I think they just local, forgot about like local us. Local media figures that. I think they just forgot about us. Yeah, and then I said I want back on. I want back in, <laughs> because my goal. Just quickly, my goal is to get Halsey Hall, a legendary Twins broadcaster, and a legend in he he was bigger than Sid Hartman back before Sid. 
Mm-hmm. Halsey Hall had a room named after him, a press conference room in the Metrodome, and he's not in the Twins Hall of Fame, and it's absolutely ridiculous, and I want Halsey Hall in the Twins Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's one. So John Gordon, yeah, there is a broadcast wing, and that, I mean, so we skipped over the obvious answer then. Dick Bramer. I don't think he won't be in there eventually. Now, does let's, he get to get him host in, get the him ceremonies? Early. Does he get to introduce himself we now, as well? We now go to Dick Bramer. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. That's what I want to know. Who's going to post when Dick gets in? Is Corey, are they going to finally allow Corey down there? You think Burt Blylevin will do it, or you think, uh, I don't know? Did you, did you guys oh, hear this? In So on Friday's telecast, because I think I heard Bramer say this, but then it just got dropped immediately. Did you guys hear him at one point, because, you know, Punto came in the booth and Dozier. Did you hear him at one point say Blylevin was in the booth? Burt came in the booth? But and then it was sort anything? of dropped. No, if if he did, hmm. it was just dropped. But like at first, I thought, oh, they're going to talk to Bert. It's going to be a you know a Dick, Dick and Bert reunion. reunion. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm. I think I might have misheard it because there was nothing. I don't know. I have to go go check the tape. See if the uh, see if Bert popped in. I don't think Bert's like if Bert really didn't want to. Based on his social media post, Bert didn't want to leave the Twins broadcast. They kind of scaled him back, scaled him back, scaled him yeah, back, and then. But he's still. Of course, like everyone who gets be hard fired feelings by the Twins, is what I'm saying. I'm saying he's in good graces. Like everyone who gets fired by this team, yeah, we fired you, but why don't you come back for our barbecue? Oh, that would be great. <laughs> they, no, they do. It's Give amazing. me a beer. How about a Speaking beer? Of, or maybe go to Burger Press and Edina before we get to the Immaculate Grid Challenge here, huh? Owned and operated by homegrown Minnesota sports fans. This is exclusive footage on YouTube of the Score North crew. Mm. Just pounding Nathan's hot dog, some of the best burgers. These are just perfect burgers from meat to bun to toppings, all sorts of different variations. Check them out. This is also not a chain. This is a locally operated uh, store or restaurant, I should say. Any Dina just off 494 on France Avenue. We've had a couple of Scornet listeners send us pictures from their from their ventures over there. And uh, you should send us pictures of your crinkle cut fries, your milkshakes, the wings, whatever you wind up getting there, it's all delicious. Over at Burger Press in Edina off of 494 and France Avenue. All right, let's put five minutes on the clock here. This is the Immaculate Grid Challenge, which is John. taking the world by storm. What is happening over there? I just got a notepad. We I heard got it. my notepad. Yeah, it was just a page. It's okay. It's not going to kill anybody. <laughs> They're going to be fine. Our listeners, man, yeah. Okay, we have on the YouTube channel here, we have a tic-tac-toe grid, oh. as you'll see. So here's what we're looking for. And we need to go nine for nine to be immaculate. The more rare the answers, the lower the rarity score, which is good. So we're looking for a ranger who was a Met, a ranger who was a Blue Jay, and a ranger who won 20 games in a season. A tiger who was a Met, a tiger who was a Blue Jay, and a tiger who won 20 games in a season. And then we're looking for a 200K season from a Mets pitcher, a 200K season from a Blue Jays pitcher, and a 20-win 200K season from any pitcher in baseball history. Five minutes on the clock. No cheating. Here we go. You know what we can use for 20-game winner who was in the news yesterday? Hmm. Kevin Brown. Oh, for uh, Rain- what, what Did he do it with the Rangers? He did. I, nice. He was, he was there Love for it. a long time. Okay. Love won it. an ERA title. Yes. Let's Kevin Brown. Oh, Kevin Brown. Okay. All right. I've got... Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. There's Ooh, 19 one different one Kevin Browns. Uh, it's got to be 1986. Just, it's got to be 1986. I think it is. Right? I'm, I'm not cheating. I'm just looking up Kevin Brown so we get there. They don't give you... They give you three Kevin yeah. Browns, and you're not, yeah. we're not going to guess. Yeah, so uh, 1986 through 2005 is the Kevin Brown we're looking for. Oh, wow. 43%. I don't think okay. there's that many. It's like Nolan Ryan maybe wow. did it with the Rangers. Kevin did Mark Brown. did Mark the Bird Fidrich in that great summer of seventy six win twenty games for the Tigers? I think he did. He was the rookie of the year and Jack. you pitched so many games. Jack Morris. Jack for sure did it. If we want to go rarity score, Fidrich would be Fidrich almost certainly won twenty, Judd, for okay. being right. I but I'm not you would that was your era. It's a little bit for me, let's be honest. I mean, I was six years old, but he was the I bird. Think, should we go with Jack? Because Verlander and Scherzer are going to be like also the other ones, sure. but but okay, Jack, sure. I That's feel fine. like, is safer. Sure. Okay. Like Jack Morris. Games. Okay. Pitching to that scoreboard. 
Twelve percent. Nice. Okay, Mets and Tigers. Um, Rust, Rusty Stab. Wow, dude. Sixty-three to eighty-five. Good lord. Two percent. Um, Blue Jays and Tigers. If I'm not mistaken, Doyle Alexander. Blue Jays, oh. Tigers. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep, there he is. Tigers. Pretty good stuff. Look at Judd on a roll 2%. here. Two percent. How about Johan for a 20 win 200k? Yeah, absolutely. It's good. That might be a rare one, one right? Everyone, everyone's yeah. forgotten he exists apparently. So one percent. Yeah, just one of the greatest players wow. of all time. It for is. Seven years, you're... But that's fine. I'm Team Macadac on this one. It is incredible. Okay. All right, we're on a roll here. Let's keep going with the the 200ks here. So, uh, 200k season. Did Pat Hentgen do it for the Blue Jays? Um, David Cohn David for the Mets or Ooh. the Blue Jays or both. What about Doc Gooden? Um, Roy oh Halliday. God, yeah, Mets. Doc Doc Roger Gooden. Clemens. Oh. Yeah, Doc Gooden for the Mets. Doc. Yeah, Doc Gooden. Yeah. What about like? Well, should we go further back and go like Tom Seaver for a rarity score? Sure. Although Tom Terrific Gooden. might outdo Gooden, I'm not sure. Let's do Gooden. Let's do Gooden. Dwight Gooden. Okay. Okay. Nineteen percent. Eh, it's okay. So um, the Blue Jays options would be uh, Clemens, David Halliday. Wells, David Wells, David Wells, David Wells. Love David Wells. Love me some David Wells. No. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. No. 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 What? The win streak. It's over. Didn't he win twenty games? How, what? Two hundred K, Phil. But okay, let's let's regroup here and finish. I'm sorry. Two hundred K. I'm not um, shocked. I mean, you guys went with it. You guys went with it. I mean. I mean, I, no, I, no, I, zero pushback whatsoever. Hey, I, hey uh, Dex, try. Try this. Try Dave Steve S T I E B as a Blue Jay pitcher. Really Dave. good pitcher. Steve. Yep, there he is. No. Oh no! We got cocky. Roy Halladay would have just been. Fine okay. There, All right. Okay. I'm done. I mean, well, we have we, we have a guess. minute ten with one guess. Do whatever. That's fine. I'm yeah. looking up Dave Steve. By the way, uh, really effective pitcher. David Wells was awesome for like three years with the Blue Jays, but definitely did not strike out 200. Oh, Dave yeah. Steeb, 190. Yeah. He got to 198 in 1984. Okay, that's I got screwed. But those dudes are throwing like 290 innings. How are you not striking out 200 hitters? Pitch to contact. Weak-ass 80s pitchers. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, we failed. We failed epically. Yep. The win streak is over. <laughs> Unlike the wow. twins, our win streak comes to a crash. <laughs> yes. Who, who's doing the post-game press conference for us? God, we would have... We're on a nice roll there, too. We failed at the Immaculate Grid. We failed at putting together a Twins playoff lineup. We and forgot, we And we failed at putting together a list of the next Twins Hall of Famers mm. yep. today. But we'll be back tomorrow with more Twin Shows, so make sure to tune yeah, in. All right. Yes, we will. Right here. This is Score North Twin Show. Thanks for listening. We're gonna-